In this episode, I'm going to highlight how I go about sharpening tungsten. Now, normally this grinder itself comes with different pads altogether. It'll normally come with a narrow 80 grit disc and then a soft buffing wheel. Now I tried using these for a little while to sharpen tungsten and actually found this grinding disc to be too aggressive to initially sharpen the tungsten and this one too soft to polish it afterward. So after taking a look on the website and in the store, I come across these two discs here. Now they didn't really highlight a, a grit rating on either of these, uh, at least none that I had noticed. Um, but I've actually found over the last several years that they're a perfect grit for polishing or well, for grinding first off and polishing a tungsten. Now there are a lot of accessories that you could use to hold a tungsten when you're sharpening it. Uh, one that's kind of getting popular is a uh, using a Dremel or a drill, something to that effect, to actually spin the tungsten. The only advantage of that that I don't really have by sharpening it by hand is that you get the opportunity to kind of swipe across your uh, grinding wheel. It prevents these grooves from forming from sharpening the tungsten. Uh, every so often I've got to come down and knock down these ridges so I can get fresh surface to, to grind to. Now it's really just a matter of bad habit. I don't really see it as a negative side effect. Uh, it just adds a little extra wear and tear. Now for myself, kind of got a little bit of bad habit uh, formed and it might take a while to break that. It might take actually getting a Dremel or something like that dedicated for grinding a tungsten. The only reason I haven't at this point is that's one extra tool that I need to go and chuck up to sharpen a tungsten. It's pretty quick and easy for me to just hold it by hand and sharpen it as I have been. So it's uh, kind of a time saver for me. Uh, because of the, the grid on these two wheels, I actually get a really high quality result uh, from a sharpening. Uh, and polishing standpoint. Um, I'm sure there are going to be comments and I look forward to comments of individuals and how they go about sharpening and maybe get a better result and I'd like to maybe implement those as well. Now normally they say when you're sharpening a, uh, a tungsten that you actually grind in the direction that the wheel is spinning. So obviously it spins downward as every other grinder in the world does probably. Uh, in that case you would sharpen in motion like this. Now, I've come to find a better result by sharpening in the opposite direction. Now, normally the problem with doing that is that the tip can get red hot and break off and actually become a projectile. I haven't really had an issue with that ever in the sense that I usually sharpen from the, from the outside diameter, the, the furthest point towards the tip. And it's actually prevented anything like that from happening to me. So I'll start a little bit further back and then rock into that tip just as much as I need to. It allows me to get a nice needle like point without that tip breaking off. And it's had really great success. The scotch Brite pad being a little bit more aggressive. Naturally, you're going to want to sharpen that in the, the normal direction downward. And it's worked out perfect. Uh, there might be a, a better grid out there if I uh, do a little bit of research or if somebody happens to mention something like that I'd be happy to try that but whatever these two end up being um, That's definitely worth worth giving it a shot now normally these two discs uh, Come on one of the bench grinders that Harbor Freight sells. Uh, they call that their uh, Three-inch tool grinder with the flex shaft on it. It's basically like a Dremel tool that's mounted to the side uh, it actually ended up being the exact same cost as buying this grinder with these two pads or discs and then buying the extra ones afterward. Now, the reason I like this one is that I don't have either that flex shaft sticking off the side or a tool in my toolbox that I don't really use. This is pretty much dedicated strictly to grinding tungsten and it stays on my TIG welder. So I don't move it around. I don't do anything extra with it. Uh, once I have my water cooler mounted in a better situation, I might permanently mount this to the top. I haven't decided yet, but that way I don't have extra tools. I've got plenty of die grinders and stuff like that where I don't need one sticking out the side of my uh, tungsten sharpener. So that's pretty much the gist of the video. Short, sweet, to the point. Thanks for watching.
But wait, there's more. All right, I couldn't just end on that note. Uh, it would kind of bother me if I didn't go the, uh, the Dremel route as well. So seeing as I have a little Dremel and a collet body that fits a uh, 332nd tungsten, I couldn't resist but add to the video. So I'm gonna go and check it up, grind it, see what the difference is, and uh, kind of go from there. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of this because you gotta mess with plugging in another tool and messing, you know, chucking it up, and sometimes the, the tungsten will stick, uh, like any Dremel tool, stick in the collet. You gotta take it all apart. Just a kind of extra time. I don't know if I'm gonna get any better results. So I'm gonna chuck it up. We'll give it a shot and see if there's any benefit to doing it. One other thing I don't like necessarily about the idea of the die grinder is that it can wobble out of balance. I don't clean up pretty well. All right, let's give it a go. One thing I can say is I don't like, at least using this Dremel in a downward motion, it, uh, it's definitely wanting to pull the tungsten out of the collet. So it's, it's as tight as I can get it by hand without using tools. And then be another thing I gotta run and, and have more pieces for. Um, occasionally it feels like it wobbles out of uh, balance. And it seems like it's running too fast. This one doesn't have any kind of speed control, so I'm kind of just uh, holding my finger on it, on the on the collet there, and holding a little pressure on it, seeing if I can get it to slow down, and that helps a little bit, but it just doesn't seem to be doing what I'd like it to. We'll see. We'll keep going. Sure if that's showing, but man, that is wobbling all over the place. I don't know about this one. All right, I can't speak uh, very positively of, of the die grinder. I think even a, a good die grinder would uh, have some issue with uh, some wobble. Then you got a bunch of collets to change out for every uh, diameter of tungsten that you end up using. Uh, it took way longer than just doing it by hand. Now, given the opportunity, if I'm doing something really delicate, I might opt for a drill, like you saw me grab here at the end of the video. Uh, that actually uh, made for pretty good results lot better speed control and actually got a better finish than doing it by hand which is a, a major plus uh, got an, a quite a bit of a higher polish the points about the same so yeah that's about the gist of it I would still go by hand and sharpen this feel com completely comfortable doing that uh, or opt for a drill if, uh, if given the opportunity if the time uh, I don't know if, it, if the drill was handy, I'd probably go for that. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. And there's using a the drill. Well, that's, uh, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found something enjoyable in it. Hopefully there was something informative and uh, I'll keep doing these things. 
So like, subscribe, give me some feedback. If there's something that uh, I could have done better or different, feel free to let me know. I'm always interested in getting a little bit better results. Have a good one.